Thank you. Sorry, I'm just chuckling at Michelle peering in. <laughs> I did say don't get comfortable. <laughs> oh, bless you. Okay, so um, let's have a little lie down because we're nice and cosy at home, so there's no reason why we can't. Sometimes when we're in that big room in the Shire Hall, it feels a bit chilly on a Monday morning. But we've got our own personal temperature control. So take a few moments when you come into this supine position to create space for yourself, not only through the back of the body, but also through the front of the body. So you have a sense that as the wide muscles of the back soften and release, as the weight of the bones sink a little more deeply into the floor, as you feel that support at the back of the head, the back of the neck. Remind yourself to unclench the jaw, to relax the tongue in the well of the mouth, to soften the cheeks and the chin, and to feel your whole body spread into the space beneath you, widen and expand as you give yourself permission to soften and release. Be particularly aware of anywhere that you're holding tension in the body. It may be that a part of the body is asking for a little extra attention. Perhaps you feel you need to channel the breath there, knowing that every out breath carries that tension away. Every in-breath serves to nourish and energize, charging your batteries, filling your body with positive energy. Become aware of the positive effect of your breath. Every inhalation Feel your upper body expand and widen into the space that surrounds you. Every exhalation, feel the back of your body sink a little more deeply into the floor. Feel your legs become heavy. Feel your arms become heavy. Softening the fingers and tuning your full awareness into the breath. following the breath from the tip of the nose along the nasal passages. Deepening the inhalation and lengthening the exhalation. Feel that space across the ribcage widen and expand that space at the back of the shoulder blades. Submit, release, and settle a little more deeply into the earth. Continue to observe the journey of your breath. Feeling the belly rise on the inhale that soften and release on the exhale. Coming to that full, deep yogic breath. Inhaling to the belly, the chest and the collarbones. Then exhaling from the collarbones, the chest and the belly last. Finding that familiar space here. That comforting release here. As you make yourself a promise. That for the next hour, we'll focus on the body and the breath. Pushing our to-do list to one side. Being truly present 
in the here and now. Now remain aware of that action of the breath. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Perhaps allowing the breath to become a little noisier. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Then releasing this next exhalation with an audible sigh. Think of that sigh as a message to the body that all tension should simply melt and release into the earth beneath you. Ready for the work of our practice. Ready to reawaken. Making little adjustments now to return sensation to the physical body. If the legs are extended, drawing the feet a little closer together. If the knees are bent, taking a moment to extend the legs along the mat. Lifting the arms overhead and taking a long stretch through the body. Inhaling to press through fingers and toes, lengthening here. Then exhaling to start by hugging the right knee in towards the chest, placing the hand to the shin. Just allowing that little release at the back of the right hip. Inhaling again to lengthen, pointing through fingers and toes, then exhaling to draw the left knee in. Again, that little bit of pressure onto the shin, widening the space at the back of the hip into the lower back. And inhale to re-lengthen. Taking a long stretch through the body. On the next exhalation, hug both knees in towards the chest. Hands can either be on the shins or the back of the thighs. And if it comforts you, perhaps rock from one side to the other, soothing any tension in the lower back. Widening again into that space at the back of the shoulder blades, back of the ribcage. Then replace both feet on the floor. As we widen the arms to create a T shape. Turning the palms up towards the ceiling. Then on and out breath, rolling those knees to the right side. So quite a subtle action this, very gentle, allowing a little release at that left side of the hip, perhaps into the side of the waist a little. Not worrying too much about the shape across the chest or the shoulders. Then exhaling to draw the tummy button in, bringing the knees back through centre and taking the knees to the opposite side. Feeling that release on the opposite hip, perhaps a little stretch to the side of the thigh. Again, a very subtle release. Then as you exhale, Draw the knees back again to centre. Now once more, hug both knees in towards the chest. Hands on the shin, chins again. As we draw a little figure of eight with the knees. So we get the sense that we're rocking from one side to the other. And we can feel that we're almost drawing a circle around the back of each hip individually. Then roll back to centre. Again, we'll widen those arms, turning the palms up towards the ceiling. On the out breath, rolling the knees to the right side, taking the gaze along the length of the left arm. Perhaps being a little more particular about the shoulder here, breathing that left shoulder back to the floor, turning the gaze along the length of the arm, using that weight to widen through the side of the chest into the waist, the inhaling from fingertip to fingertip, then exhaling to draw the tummy button in, rolling the knees back through centre, then taking the knees to the opposite side, releasing into that right side of the ribcage, the waist, into the hip, allowing that right shoulder to become heavy, 
your gaze along the length of the arm, every out breath sinking a little more deeply into the space behind you. And acknowledging any feedback from the body, any tension here. On the next exhalation, be sure to draw the tummy button in as you roll the knees back again towards centre. Both hands again to the shins or the knees as you repeat that little figure of eight, keeping that space in the lower back nice and soft. As you roll again into centre, reposition those feet on the floor. So the knees remain bent, the heels hit width apart, the insides of the feet parallel. Lift both arms overhead. We'll rest the backs of the hands on the floor. Mindful that this might create a little tension at the side of the pectoral muscles into the underarms. So if you need to, a little bend in the elbows, perhaps widening the arms, just taking that tension away from the lower back as we visualise breathing that space through the chest, wider, softer, resting the weight of the, these shoulder blades into the floor. Then pushing down into the soles of the feet and inhaling to lift the bottom from the mat. Wide through the chest, pressing the shins forward. Every in-breath, lifting the thighs a little higher. Every out-breath, softening the space at the back of the shoulders. Making sure we feel equally weighted through the feet, through the space at the back of the shoulders. Avoiding any tension at the back of the neck by taking the body weight forward, pressing through the shins, lifting the thighs higher. Then on and out breath, lifting the arms up and over as you gently roll down through the spine, vertebra by vertebra. Bringing the middle back to the floor. Easing the lower back onto the mat allowing the buttocks to soften. Then replacing the hands either side of the hips, turning the palms up towards the ceiling and inhale to squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears. Then an exhale to point the fingers down towards the heels. On your next out breath, relax in that space. Again, the shoulders are wide, relax. On the out breath, draw both knees in towards the chest. No need to use the hands on the shins. Then we'll reposition the knees at a 90 degree angle directly above the hips. Keep that left knee bent as we extend and lengthen the right foot up towards the ceiling. Sole of the foot parallel to the ceiling. Inhaling to point. Exhaling to flex. Checking in with any lift in the lower back. So on the out breath, drawing the tummy button in, pushing the lower back to the floor. Keep working through that natural range of movement through the point and flex in the ankle. Then come to full flexion, engage the core, bend the right knee, and we'll extend and lengthen through the left. So we start with that intention to hold the sole of the foot parallel to the ceiling. Quite a tight stretch to the back of the calf and the thigh. Then we'll work through the joint, inhaling to point and flex. Warming the ankle, gently lengthening the calf, softening the shin. Then keep the core engaged as you bend that left knee. So we have both knees directly above the hips. So usual rules apply here. If having the knees in this position creates such weight that the lower back is lifting, by all means, just nudge the knees a little bit closer towards the body. Keeping the knees bent means that we're controlling the amount of lift in the lower back. On the next exhalation, draw the tummy button in, lift the hands directly above the shoulders, softening the shoulders down into the floor. Visualising that we're breathing space between the palms of the hands. Fingers are soft. Every exhale, drawing the tummy button in. Every inhale, widening through the collarbones. So you can feel that connection through the back of the shoulder blades, 
into that space through the back of the hips. Keeping that core engagement as you exhale, sliding the hands back and resting the thumbs an inch from the floor. Take the arms a little wider. Support that tightness at the side of the pectorals, engaging the core muscles, pressing through the fingertips. Then as you exhale, bring the arms back to centre. Then we'll hug the knees in towards the chest, hands to the shins again, a gentle rock from one side to the other. Now let's reposition both feet onto the floor. Again, we're creating that bridge shape. So knees hip width apart, inside of the feet parallel. This time we'll have the hands either side of the hips rather than overhead, as we push into the soles of the feet and lift the bottom from the floor. To encourage more opening through the chest, slide the hands together and create an interlock here. So your interlock, you almost feel as though you're pushing through the back of the hands. That will encourage more opening through the chest. Inhaling to press the shins forward, lifting the thighs higher. Then on the out breath, separate the hands, but keep that level of lift through your bridge. Just check in that the knees haven't rolled out. So we're realigning knees with hips, finding a connection under the sole of the left foot as we draw the right knee in towards the chest, then push the heel up towards the ceiling. Use the big toe to draw three circles in towards the midline of the body. Then change direction, take those circles the other way. Point through the toe, come back to flexion, pushing through the heel, engage the core, then bend that right knee in and replace it on the mat. Let's press the shins forward, lift the thighs again, realigning the knees with the hips, finding that connection now under the sole of the right foot as you bend the left knee in. Then again, we lift and lengthen through that left leg. Come to flexion, then use the big toe to draw three circles in towards the midline of the body. Take those circles the opposite way. Point through the toe, come again to flexion, lifting through the thighs, bending that left knee in, then carefully replacing that foot to the floor. Inhaling to press both shins forward, then on and out breath, starting again at the space between the shoulder blades as you take your time to roll down through the spine. So this time might feel as though it takes a little longer. We've created more space, particularly in the middle back, into the lower back. Then as you feel the back of the hips fully connect to the floor, draw the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to roll open. Now bring the hands again to an interlock. This time we'll use the interlock to support the back of the head. So widen the elbows. We should be able to feel the upper arms, the forearms fully rested to the floor. For a moment, we're just allowing gravity to widen the space in the inner thighs, <clears throat> to soften in around the hip. Then as you come to the next exhale, follow the right elbow as you extend through the upper body, drawing the right elbow down towards the right knee, turning your gaze over the left elbow, and again, keeping the arms connected to the floor. So really wide through the chest. Engage the core, inhale to come back to center. Then we'll exhale to take that stretch to the opposite side. So remember, rather than lifting the elbows, we're widening the elbows, turning the gaze now along the length of the right upper arm keeping those shoulders back and down, then exhaling to draw the tummy button in and returning again to centre. Let's release the hands from the back of the head, reposition the hands either side of the hips, then as you exhale, 
draw the tummy button in and slide the thighs towards one another. Reposition the feet hip width apart, engage the core. Then we'll just have a little rest here as we hug the knees towards the chest. I'm mindful that this often creates a little lift in the lower back, so we just want to soften that off. Then replace both feet to the floor. We'll keep the right foot on the floor as we bring the left foot up and over. As we always do in this position, we'll take a moment to adjust the knee, rolling the knee in towards the nose. The first position is to simply lift the right foot from the floor, squeezing the knee in towards the chest and starting a gentle stretch to the left side of the hip, perhaps the buttock. Then to get a little more purchase with this stretch, bring the hands behind the right thigh. Take hold of the thigh and just draw a little bit closer, deepening the stretch to the side of the hip. On the next out breath, push that right foot up towards the ceiling, sole of the foot parallel to the ceiling. Inhale to point, exhale to flex, pressing again through the heel, drawing the hips back to the floor. Then allowing once more that bend in the knee, coming back to a 90 degree angle, using the hands again to sneak the thigh a little closer to the chest. Then releasing the hands from the back of the thigh, replacing that foot to the floor. Let's keep the foot where it is as we widen the arms into a T-shaped position. We won't do anything fancy with the hips, we'll simply bring that left knee over the midline of the body and we'll draw the left knee to the right side as we turn the gaze over the left arm. Chances are we'll all be feeling this in a different place. Places of resistance that are allowing stretcher to the side of the hip, perhaps even the side of the thigh. That tight space at the side of the chest, the pectoral muscles, the underarms. But if you're feeling undue pressure in the lower back, bring the knee a little closer to centre. Let's put less gravitational pull on the floor. Then on and out breath, draw the tummy button in and roll the knees back again towards centre. Unhook that right foot and we'll simply transition to bring the opposite foot up and over. Now again, we want to roll that knee in towards either the chest or the nose. So give yourself a centre point to focus on. As you exhale, lift that foot from the floor, squeeze the thigh in. So we've now transferred to receiving the stretch on the opposite, either buttock or hip side of thigh. We get ourselves used to this space. Then we'll use the hands, the interlock behind the thigh, to draw the thigh a little closer again. It just deepens that stretch. It might transfer into a little deeper stretch to the back of the hamstring. As long as it isn't affecting the back, all is well. Now we'll keep hold of the leg as we push the heel of the left foot up towards the ceiling, bringing that foot parallel to the ceiling. Then inhale to point, exhale to flex, push again through the heel, drawing the back of the hip to the floor. Then on and out breath, come back to that 90 degree angle, slide the thigh closer to the chest again, deepening the stretch. Then release the hands from the back of the leg, replace the foot to the floor. Widen again into that T-shaped position and we'll bring the right knee over the midline of the body, coming into a nice gradual release. Turning the gaze over the length of the right arm this time. Once more mindfully keeping that right shoulder released to the floor. Enjoying that little softening at the side of the hip into the buttock. 
And again, just listen out for that disruption, any noise in the lower back. Just bring the knees a little closer to centre. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in. Roll back to centre. Unhook the right foot. Then hug both knees in towards the chest. When you're ready, replace both feet to the floor. I'll remind you we've started laid down, we've been down quite a while. So if you are likely to feel dizzy, choose the left side. Otherwise, roll to the side that feels most comfortable and we'll come up to a seated position. So I'm going to start the seated section in um, a cross-legged position. I'm going to choose to put the right foot in front because it will keep me right and then I'll remember where I am. We're going to try a posture that we don't do very often today. We're going to uh, transition into cow-faced pose. So I need to make sure that the inner thighs, we've done a little bit of outer thighs already, are prepared. We also need to have a little bit of space through the chest. So we'll start by giving ourselves a hug. It doesn't matter which arm is on top, we will do both. And as soon as we bring the hands in front of the chest, there's a tendency to lean forward. So line up the back of the head with the tailbone, engage the core. And we'll just take a moment to gently nod the chin to the chest and create a little length here through the back of the neck, along the length of the spine. Then as you exhale, engage the core, bring the head back to centre, then switch that hug over, so opposite arm on top. This time bringing the underside of the chin parallel to the right shoulder. Then following the nose through center to bring the chin parallel to the left shoulder. Then return again to center, separating the arms, bringing the hands behind you into an interlock. Again, leaning back into the space, widening through the chest, engaging the core and lifting the arms away from the lower back. So opening through that heart space. Avoid, if you can, pushing through the chin. Try to remain aligned. Then release the hands, reposition the hands in front of the ankles and inhale to lift up and exhale to walk forward. Finding your personal comfortable position here. So remember a, an aim might be to get the elbows towards the floor. It might be enough to focus on drawing the shoulder blades together and keeping that diagonal line from the back of the head to the tailbone. Again, we should be feeling a little more resistance in the inner thighs and in around the hips. If there's any discomfort in the lower back, maybe consider lifting the head, the shoulders a little higher. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in and walk the hands back again towards the ankles. Switch that leg cross over. We'll do opposite hand, at opposite foot in front, extending both arms forward. Bringing the palms together, stacking left forefinger to the top, Hands open towards the heart, elbows soft, shoulder blades drawn together, core engaged. Now keep that tummy button drawn in, keep the hands facing in towards the heart as you curve through the spine and nod the chin to the chest. Then inhale to lift up, come back to centre. So we've got the hands extended in front of the chest rather than wrapped over. If we turn the hands inside out now, we'll get a little bit of opening through the palms, but be mindful not to lock out the elbows, keep them soft. Engage the core and float both hands overhead. Pushing through the palms of the hands, softening the shoulders down away from the ears. Then as you exhale, let's take an extension to the right side. As you turn the head, tucking the chin under that left upper arm, then inhaling again back to centre, taking that extension to the opposite side, tucking the chin under the right upper arm, 
and then coming back again towards centre. Pressing through the palms, engaging the core, floating the hands back to that chest level. Turning the hands inside out. Now bringing the right arm in front of the chest, using the left arm to hook under and gently drawing that upper left arm closer to the chest as you turn to look over the right shoulder. Then bring the head to centre, release the right arm, bring the left arm in and take the gaze over the opposite shoulder. Then again, bring the gaze to centre, release. Bring the right hand up and over, placing the palm between the shoulder blades. Now we start by applying a little pressure into the shoulder blades, so pushing through the palm. You might get a deeper stretch by bringing the opposite hand over, but what I'll remind you is, ideally we want that elbow rolled out rather than in, and we don't want pressure on the head so that we end up leaning forward. So if you're using the hand overhead, make sure that you clear the top of the head. Then apply a little pressure, deepening the stretch into the side of the tricep. It's not comfortable for everyone. And some of you might prefer, if it's within your range of movement, to bring the hands together behind the back. I'm afraid it's not within my gift, so I'll stick as I am. Now engage the core, take that right arm up and over, we'll switch over to the opposite side. So start with the gentle stretch, just allowing gravity, that intention of pressing the palm into the space between the shoulder blades, roll the elbow out. Then if you wish, bring the other arm up and over, but remember we're always keeping the head clear. Then if you can, let's bring both hands together. Beautiful. Then as you exhale, release, and we'll just place the hands, palms up on the insides of the thighs. Inhale to squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears, then exhale, just shrug them and let them go. Inhale to squeeze the shoulders up, then gently rolling the shoulders back and down, creating little circles here with the shoulders. Then once more, squeezing all the way up and with allowing that tension to release as you relax the shoulders away. Perfect. So we're going to move on to the legs for the seated cow faced pose. So cow faced pose is the one where we kind of have one leg underneath the body, but the heel goes to the outside of the hip. So I shall demonstrate. So I'm bringing the right knee, having a bend in the right knee underneath the top leg. And then bringing that top leg heel up and over. So I'm wearing black, so that's a little cheaty because it looks as if I'm making quite a nice shape, but I'm sure my knees aren't in alignment. In a perfect world, the knees will be stacked one on top of the other, so mine are slightly off centre. In an even more ideal world, the sides of the feet will be fully connected to the floor. And it might be that you perhaps need to use a cushion or a blanket, something to maybe just fill that gap on one side because we might not be able to get them both to the floor and in the most ideal utopia in the world both sit bones will be equally weighted so typically in this posture we end up with all the weight on the one sit bone so let's try to find the sit bones equally weighted i'm having a lot of faces looking at me like you're having a laugh you know you're having a laugh then we'll add the arms, that's the bit I can't do. So bringing the right hand to the middle of the rib, uh, shoulder blades, then bringing the opposite arm up. And then the icing on the cake, it's a bit like goddess this one. You get to let all your tension out with a big tongue out and a big breath. <sighs> Actually it's cow face pose so we should probably go Mah. <laughs> that felt good. Mah. Yeah, I'm putting that one in my um, stress recovery toolkit. Then release the arms. 
And then you'd be pleased to know we can release the legs. This is like twister, not yoga. And then we'll bring the opposite foot over. So don't be under any illusions that because you could get it on one side or you couldn't get it on one side, that it'll be the same in the other. It won't be. This is where the challenge comes in. So again, I'll show you that my knees are definitely off center. Not happy with the position of that ankle. It's a little bit too high off the floor. But more pointedly, I can feel that my whole body is turning into that bent knee. So adjusting to bring the sit bones to be equally weighted, then bringing the left arm to the center of the shoulder blades, bringing the right arm up. Much more challenging on this side. So I'll smile through it and then I'll make my big moo sign. So deep breath in. Man, I sound more like a goat than a cow. What's going on here? One more time. Man, it's hard to make an ooh sound when your tongue's out. <laughs> and when you're ready, release the arms, release the legs, and say thank you very kindly. That was simply joyful. Soles of the feet together allow the knees to release out. So almost as a counter to that extreme release that we found at the side of the hips, we're coming into the inner thighs now, which is a much more familiar space. Lifting up and lengthening out of the sit bones, then exhaling to hinge into this space. So don't be surprised if we feel a little tight here. We haven't done a lot yet to warm the inner thighs. Make sure that we're nice and disciplined with the upper body. So shoulder blades drawn together, leading with the sternum rather than the chin, allowing the weight of the shoulders to hinge forward. Keep that core engaged, then lift and lengthen, lining up the back of the head with the back of the tailbone, taking hold of the right foot as you push through the heel, and again, remember, we're likely to be tipping back or out of our center point of gravity here. So if it helps to widen the opposite arm, that might just give you a little more space to lift, lift, lift. Then bring that foot back to center, keep the core engaged, take the opposite foot wide, lift and lengthen. Send the breath to where you feel the tension. If the tension for you is at the back of the thigh, let's go there. It might be the knee, it might be the calf. Keep lifting and lengthening out of the sit bones. Then bring that foot back to centre. Keep the core engaged. You know where you're going. Both feet. And remember, if you roll back, I score five points. Just to, you know, motivate you. Keep pressing through the heels, lifting and lengthening through the sternum. If I roll back, you all get 20 points. So, you know, it's a fair game. Then when you're ready, bring the soles of the feet together, widen the knees again, lift up and lengthen, exhale to hinge forward. So we're really softening now into the inner thighs. So keep that core engaged. Let's keep control of the lower back. We never want to overdo it. And we'll simply extend the left leg open so that we can keep the right knee bent and bring the sole of the foot to the inside of that thigh. So remember the golden ticket is always to keep a little bit of slack underneath the extended leg. So take as much bend in that knee as you need. And um, what I'll also suggest is for those of you who feel the tension in the hamstring, be mindful that the more your leg is in front of you, the more likely you are to be using the hamstring. The wider you take the leg, you borrow a little more from the inner thigh. Um, and I only offer that because I know that for me, I don't really like overworking the hamstring. So I tend to kind of borrow from this muscle quite a lot. So it might be comfortable for you to try that as an alternative. Do check in with your posture. It's chances are you're slightly leaning over to that right side. Chances are the left buttock is off the floor. So let's bring the sit bone square again, pointing that left toe up towards the ceiling, then repositioning the hands one on each side of that bent knee. So your 
intention here is to keep that left sit bone stuck to the floor to make sure that you're not pushing the chin forward as you lead the sternum towards that bent knee. So walking the hands forward, easing the elbows towards the floor. Now my left buttock is now lifted from the mat. So I'm going to walk a little further back, draw the shoulder blades together and keep pushing my weight into the sit bones. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in and walk the hands back towards centre. Easy as that. Then take the opposite foot wide, bend the left knee in. Try to keep that right toe pointing up to the ceiling. It activates the right muscle group. Then again, we've got that equal balance through the sit bones, hands either side of the bent knee. We need to have a little bit of rotation in the rib cage so that we're not twisting the back. Then as you exhale, walk forward onto this side. Yeah, see this side's much more challenging. Inner thigh's already crying. It's all about blood, sweat and tears. Shoulder blades drawn together. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in walk the hands back again to centre, it's much nicer, then widen both feet and then we're going to do quite an exaggerated lift under the knees so pick the knees up so that you can see there's a nice big space there. Bring the hands firstly onto the floor so yes that will encourage the upper body to tip forward but we're keeping the diagonal so it doesn't matter about the spine won't be curved if we've got that awareness. Then we'll ease the elbows towards the floor. Then we'll slide the hands out underneath the ankles, shoulder blades drawn together, leading with the stern, coming a little more deeply into this pose. Do watch the lower back in this posture. No sudden movements. As you exhale, engage the core, reposition the hands under the shoulders, so rather than lifting from centre, push into the hands, support your back and walk back to centre. Lovely. Now draw the feet together. Nice long line here, coming into Dandasana pose. So in Dandasana, again, it's permissible to have that little slack under the knees, but we don't want too much slack in the spine. So lift and lengthen out of the sit bones, bring the hands to shoulder level, Toes pointing up towards the ceiling. Inhale to lift the arms overhead, softening the shoulders down away from the ears. Then again, we'll bring the thumbs together in an interlock. That will just give us a little bit more purchase. So as we almost feel as though we're pulling the thumbs together, we can lift ourselves more cleanly out of the sit bones, widening through the chest. Try to keep those toes pointing up to the ceiling. You'll start to feel a bit of heat through the front of the thighs. Then as you exhale, engage the core, reposition the hands either side of the hips, draw both feet in, push down into the soles of the feet, lift the bottom, press the shins forward. Ideally, we'd like a straight line from the knee through the hip to the shoulder. Then on and out breath, Replace the bottom to the floor and because we've done quite a lot of folding forward, I'm just going to get you to roll back for a moment, hugging the knees to the chest and just honouring any tightness in the lower back. So my preference is always that figure of eight motion. I quite like the weight of the legs massaging the lower back. Then return again to bring both feet to the floor. And I am going to bring you back to an upright position. So left or right side, whatever's comfortable for you. And can we come straight into an all fours position? So I'll give the hips a little bit of a rest. We'll come back to focusing a little on the core, spreading through the fingers, softening through the elbows. And we don't want to feel that we're holding ourselves up from the wrists. So you might want to just take your body weight a little further back so that we're equally weighted. 
turn both toes under, exhale, draw the tummy button in, roll up through the spine and nod the chin to the chest. The opposite action to this shape is the cow pose, drawing the chest forward, not to be confused with the cow faced pose, which we did earlier. Exhaling to roll up. Inhaling to lift the chest forward. Then coming back to neutral spine, walking the hands forward, sticking the palms to the mat as you push the sit bones back towards the heels, lowering the ears down between the upper arms, but try not to bring the forehead fully to the floor. We don't want to overdo the release in the neck. Let the weight of the sit bones push towards the heels. Then lower the elbows, slide the chest forward, slide the thighs back. Keep the forearms connected to the floor, elbows under shoulders. Then inhale to lift the chest. On an exhale, looking over one shoulder. On an inhale, looking ahead. Exhale to look over the other shoulder. Then inhale again to look forward. On the out breath, lower down. Reposition the hands either side of the chest. Draw the elbows in. Push into the palms, inhale to lift the chest, keeping the thighs stuck to the floor if you can. Then on and out breath, pushing back and lengthening. Lifting the fingertips from the mat, pushing the wrists to the floor. Then replacing the hands, returning to an all fours position. Take the right foot back, turn the toe under, push through the heel. Then float that heel up, reset the hips and the shoulders parallel to the mat as you extend the left arm forward. So the intention is to keep looking down, shoulders square, elbows soft. Then we'll draw little circles with the wrist in towards the body, little circles with the toe. Then replace the wrist, replace the knee. Opposite foot back. Start again with that lovely stretch in the calf. Let's not rush that. It's a nice way of releasing the lower back, pushing the calf and the heel towards the floor. Then lifting that left heel, hips square again, shoulders square, coming into that Superman position. Then again, using the wrist, the toe, to keep the joints soft. Beautiful. Then replace the hand, replace the knee, and we're going to take the knees a little wider. So we're taking the knees as wide as the edge of the mat, might even go off the mat. Bring the tips of the toes together. Lower firstly the elbows towards the floor, then push the sit bones back towards the heels. Now in this shape, it's much more likely that you'll bring the forehead to the floor, We've got a little extra space in the inner thighs. If the forehead to the floor isn't comfortable for you, there's nothing to stop you from stacking the hands under the head and allowing the head to rest here. Just breathe into this space in the inner thighs. Then we'll realign if we've used the hands under the head to bring the hands forward. Then we'll slide the right hand back, the left hand back, draw the knees together, turning both toes under, exhaling to draw the tummy button in, rolling up through the spine. Come back to a neutral spine position. Let's not bother doing the opposing action. Walking both feet back, coming into a plank. You know my views on plank, it's the best posture to get out of stuff where you feel a little bit tight. Yes, it's a strength pose. Yes, it needs a little bit of focus, but it's a great way of getting everything back into alignment. There's no choice but the shoulders to be stacked over the wrists, the elbows to be soft. It's okay to have a tiny lift in the bottom, but we don't want too much. Then we're going to keep our focus on the right hand being on the floor as we lift the left hand up to the right shoulder. 
then replace that hand to the floor, opposite hand to opposite shoulder, replace that foot to the floor, stack the left foot on top of the right foot, easy peasy, replace to the floor, right foot on top of left, replace to the floor, then lower down, knees, chest, chin, bottom is up, inhale to lift the chest, then turn the toes under, push up into downward facing dog, pressing the heels to the floor, lifting the tailbone, focusing on the breath. You might want to think about rolling the upper arms out, opening through the collarbones, but keeping the wrists solid, pushing the sit bones to the back of the room, bending the right knee in, pushing the left heel to the floor, and just finding a little space here. Both heels to the mat, inhaling to lift the tailbone, then as you exhale, come down into a child's pose. Bring the forehead towards the floor. And I'll suggest that you take the wrists either side of the ankles, drawing little circles. We have been using the wrists to stabilize the shoulders. So you might be feeling a little tired now. Then when you feel ready, we'll transition through hero just so that we can get our heads up. And then I'll invite you to lie back again on the floor. So lie on your back, starting with the knees bent. And just to make sure that we've kept that space in the lower back nice and easy and released, we'll come back into that um, belly twist. So widening the arms into um, the T-shaped position, palms turned up. Then lifting the feet off the floor, keeping the knees bent. 90 degree angle at the knees as you roll the knees to the right side, turning your gaze along the left arm. And then just hang on to that space for a moment. Send the breath to where the resistance is. I always imagine the resistance has a little red berry on. Then engage the core, roll the knees through centre. Take the knees to the opposite side. Maybe they've got a trench coat on, a string of onions around the neck, I don't know. However you visualise your resistance is all good. Then engage the core. Let the knees release again. Then on the next out breath, roll back through centre. Again, another little hug of the knees in towards the chest. And then choose the position that will best support you for our final Shavasana. So you may prefer to keep the knees bent. You might prefer to extend the legs, to widen the hands and the feet, equal distance from the midline of the body. Again, choosing whether you wish to turn the palms up towards the ceiling in a gesture of receptivity, or whether you perhaps feel you need a little more connection to the earth by turning the palms to the floor. Tune in again to your breath. Slowing the breath down. And finding balance in the breath. Equal length to the breath in and to the breath out. When you come to your next exhalation, 
Imagine that you're breathing out of your ears. Notice the space around your ears. Feel it. Think about it. Imagine it. In that space around your ears, do you notice any sound? Just notice any sounds coming into your ears. Or perhaps for you, it's quiet in that space. Can you hear your breath? Pay attention. Notice when there is sound. Notice when there is quiet. When you breathe out, visualize the space all around you in this room. Feel it. Think it. Visualize the space all around you in this room. As you widen your awareness to take in the space in the room that surrounds you, do you notice any sound? Just notice the sound, then let go of the sound. Almost as though you can turn the volume down Noticing how it feels different when there is sound and when it's quiet. Can you hear my voice moving towards you? Can you hear the sound of my voice? When you breathe out, imagine the space outside this room. Feel it, think it, visualize it. In that space outside, can you discern any sound? Just notice the sound and let it go. It may be that as you widen your awareness into the space outside of the room, that you notice different sounds. Tune into each of those sounds individually. Notice them one by one. Then again, use your internal volume control. Turn them down. And let them go. Once more, take a moment to appreciate the difference when there is sound and when it's quiet.
of the sounds you've identified. Follow the sounds. How far do they go? On your next breath out. Bring yourself back into this space in the room. Visualising the space that surrounds you. Noticing the sounds in this room. Notice my voice. Just notice the sound and let it go. When you breathe out, imagine that space around your ears. Notice that space. Notice the sound closest to you, the sound of your breath. Allow your breath to become a little noisier. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Then give yourself permission to let go of this practice of focusing on the sound of the breath. As you bring your full awareness back to the physical body, to your connection with the earth beneath you, the weight of your bones, the release of your joints, the softness of your muscles. Your body may feel soft, heavy and completely released. So start to feel every inhalation Lightening the weight. Returning a sense of lightness to your body. Re-energizing. Revitalizing. And reawakening. Start to make little movements now to return sensation to the physical body. Wiggling fingers and toes. Wiggling the jaw and the nose. If you wish, take a long stretch through the body. If you prefer, hug the knees to the chest. Then take your time to roll to one side, blinking the eyes open. And in your own time, return to a comfortable seated position. Now bring your hands to an Anjali Mudra. Touch to the head for kind thoughts, to the lips, for kind words and to the heart for kind intentions. The light in me honours the light in you. Namaste.